Well, hello and blessed day to all of you, my beloved prisoners. Buen día tengan todos ustedes, mis queridos feligreses. So, lo prometido es deuda. Eh, les he estado prometiendo un video eh, para darles una actualización de todas las normas, que, los cambios que hemos estado haciendo, eh, lo que nos ha pedido el señor obispo, las autoridades civiles. So, um, um, doing this video, uh, as I told you a while back, or a few days ago, uh, to give you all an update of the different things that, um, the changes, uh, the guidelines. I know that we've talked about most of these things either through, uh, through, letter, through a letter, uh, through the bulletin on Sunday, a few Sundays ago, uh, through some of the video messages that I've been sending you. Uh, but right now, I just want to be able to do more of a summary and uh, just tell you where we're at with the bishop, uh, both Bishop Aviles and Bishop um, Flores, they have been in communication with us priests and they've been updating us. They have been very good at giving us guidance uh, in how we're supposed to navigate through this, but on that, uh, more on that a little bit uh, later. The important thing is this. As a shepherd, as your pastor, I have a desire, a need even, to know that you are doing well to see what it is that you need right now spiritually to help you verbalize, uh, process, express what we're all going through. Now, many of you have also texted me or called me uh, just to make sure that I'm okay, to see how my parents are doing, and for that, believe me, I am very grateful. I am here for you as much as we can, as much as we can stay in contact, starting right now through the social media, but in reality, it's always good to hear from you, to see you, even though we have to maintain those proverbial six feet of social distance. But please know that no matter what, we, your priests, your shepherds, are here for you. I'm also in constant communication with Father Luis from St. Benedict's and uh, Father Joe from St. Teresa and Father Salvador in St. Helens. And I can assure you that I am so touched by the, the love of my brother priest to their fellow parishioners. And so therefore, we were excited because in a sense, God has never given us this opportunity to express to you the depth of our love for you. I know we do it in many other ways throughout the year, through the liturgy, through the different activities, but this is unprecedented for us. And so in spite of all the confusion and all the uncertainties, I still express to you once again, I love you, I'm here for you. And I assure you that whatever you need, I, as your shepherd, will do everything I can to provide for you spiritually. Now, I have to do a disclaimer. When I say everything you need, I'm sorry, I don't have any money to give you. In fact, I'm going to be needing you to give us some money later on. But, of course, I'm referring to anything spiritually. The, the ministry of presence for us priests right now is, is so important. The Word of God tells us, because we can always go to the Word of God, to strengthen us, to guide us, to teach us. In Psalm 46, verse 2, God is our strength and our refuge, an ever-present help in distress. God is our strength. He is our refuge, an ever-present help in distress. He is with his people. He is in our suffering, in our humanity, as I explained at the homily for, for this weekend's Mass. El Señor se ha encarnado en nuestra humanidad. He is present to our needs. He is present uh, in our suffering. Uh, there's another scripture passage that I want to share with you. This is from Philippians chapter 4, verse... Let me find it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, 7. <clears throat> and it says, Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It says, my brothers and sisters, have no anxiety. Of course, the Lord here is telling us about the anxiety that, that takes us away from him. 
yeah, it's okay sometimes we are anxious and we're worried and concerned, but at the end of the day, we have to ground ourselves in Him. We could be scared, frightened even, in the flesh. And that's okay. We're still in the flesh. But we must never be afraid in the Spirit. We must never let fear enter into that sacred space of our spirit because we belong to God. And the Lord says the battle belongs to Him. We are overcomers. With Christ, we have already conquered and so have no anxiety at all. In everything, tell the Lord, platicaselo, cuéntaselo. You're feeling frustrated? Pour it out to Him. You're feeling joyful one day? Sing to Him. You know, I do my best um, singing. I know, I know. When do I do my best singing? You've heard me sing and you know, you know how. That's not one of my gifts. Uh, but I do my best, my best prayer, rather, in the shower. Because of the Lord is there too with me. At my house, my bedroom. When I'm walking Benny, out in the yard. When I'm going to the Rasaka and taking a good walk. Just casually talking to the Lord. As you would a best friend. In everything, by prayer, petition, supplication, make your request known to God. My brothers and sisters, we have nothing to fear. The Lord has set us free from all bondage, from all fear, from all anxiety. So the things that I wanted to talk to you today, uh, besides um, just regular updates that I want to give you, uh, and besides going into the Word of God and, and, and just finding uh, different, um, different ways that the Lord uh, is always strengthening, strengthening us, the way the Lord is always encouraging us, uh, I did write a few notes because, as you know, my mind goes all over the place. And uh, so I just want to make sure that I stay focused in what I want to share with you today. Um, all right, so uh, just an update on, on the suspension of events. As you know, about two weeks ago, uh, our bishop uh, decreed that all masses, uh, both Sunday and daily masses in our diocese, uh, will be suspended indefinitely. Uh, all parish activities, all catechetical instruction uh, is suspended. <coughs> and... Um, but one thing that he reminded us, the bishop, to remind all of you is that it doesn't mean that we priests are there for on vacation or that we can just be absent and sleep late. We are reminded or we were reminded that we made a commitment when we were ordained to celebrate Mass daily and primarily celebrate the Mass for you. In fact, this whole idea of Mass intentions is because it is the priest that offers the sacrifice of the Mass. It is his intention. Only the priest can do that. And then he puts aside, in a sense, his intentions to accept your intentions. Or rather, your intentions become his intention for that, for that Mass. And so we have to continue offering Masses for all of you. I'm also honoring all the Mass intentions that were already uh, in the Mass Intentions book, the weekday Masses, and since I do the Tuesday through Friday Masses, the intentions for that day, uh, I, I will read whatever, and I've been celebrating the intentions for that day. Um, for the weekend Masses, the Saturday and Sunday, the five Masses, <clears throat> I, I'm combining all of those into the one Sunday Mass. Um, and so we will continue celebrating. We'll, we will continue uh, having the Masses. But I'm, I am going to speak a little bit more on that later as far as uh, other uh, sacramental uh, liturgical events that we can have, and like confessions and, and uh, sick calls, but I will tell you a little bit more about what some of the restrictions on that are. Um, let me tell you one thing, though. As I am reaching out to you, and, and I, I do pray to the Lord to give me the heart of a shepherd, uh, so that you can truly feel loved, shepherded, uh, that I'm there with you. Our bishop is doing the same thing. I, I've been very touched by both Bishop Flores and uh, Bishop Mario uh, and the Pope. You've seen you know, the, the consternation in the Pope, uh, how he's struggling and, and, and just the, 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 the look on his face of the, the concern that he has. Again, there's a genuine concern that we as human beings have because as we saw in the Gospel, the Lord himself wept. For Lazarus' death, but it's not a concern for of despair uh, or 
and that an anxiety that will take away our peace. We're all concerned. And that's because we're human, and that's because we're connected, and that's because we care for one another. But at the same time, we are trusting in the Lord. And so Bishop Flores and Bishop Aviles have been very, uh, uh, how can I say the word, shepherd-like, exercising their shepherding ministry. After all, the bishop is the, the principal shepherd of our diocese. And so, both Bishop uh, Flores and Bishop Aviles have been very good uh, providing us with incredible guidance um, and support to us as, as priests. They are concerned uh, for all of you as well. We have been reminded, in case we forget, not to jump. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> not to jump ship at this time, or any time really. Not to go on vacation. In other words, we need to be present to you. So I want to assure you of that. I pray that the Lord will give me the heart of a shepherd to be kind, compassionate, understanding. If you see me walking around the parking lot, stop by and say hello, of course keeping your, your six feet of distance. But do when you swing by. I mean, don't come on purpose, okay, because you have to respect the shelter in place. But if you're up and around running your errands um, and you see me, just say hi. Throw me a taco or something, or some buffalo wings. Because we stay, we, we need to stay connected. We need one another. All right, uh, let me update you on the office hours and office staff. I know some of you have been calling, and sometimes it goes to voicemail. Um, again, the most important thing for the bishop to us priests is be available. Uh, even if the church is closed and we're no longer having masses, there's something about the availability of the priest, the staff, gives people a sense of comfort, a sense of assurance. Respecting not just the guidelines, but now the orders from our civil authorities and the guidance from our bishop. So the office hours uh, have been shortened somewhat, uh, Tuesday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 12 noon, and then 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And I've done this the first week when after we suspended the masses. But then after we received the uh, shelter in place, then um, we needed to make a decision. So we're, the two office ladies, Yvette and uh, Mary, will not be in the office at the same time. So one of them will always be there, uh, either Yvette or Mary. Uh, Gloria, who's uh, our custodian, will clean the office when they are not uh, at the office, uh, which is by herself. Again, to limit that contact of the ladies in the office. And during those hours, Tuesday through Friday, 8.30 to 12 and 1 to 5, um, it may be that I come by and the, um, the, the, the doors is locked. And by the way, we, I bought a new doorbell and, and it broke right away. So um, I need to get a, a new, better doorbell. Uh, but knock on the door uh, and they should be there at those times. But again, we're keeping the office locked uh, to limit that contact. Besides, most of you should be sheltering in place. Uh, if you do come, one person or one small family at a time inside the office, please. Um, and so, let me see what else. It, so the best way to contact us is through the, through the telephone. Um, I'm gonna be probably forwarding the parish phone, uh, for parish phone number to one of our cell phones so that if you need to contact one of us, you, it'll be forwarded to, um, to our cell phone. One of our cell phones. As far as uh, guidelines for mass, mass intentions, sick calls, anointing, confession, appointments uh, with me during this time. So we continue to take, we continue to take mass intentions over the phone this time. <coughs> Any event will continue scheduling them, but be aware that daily mass uh, will be done through Facebook Live, uh, weekend masses. All the masses for the weekend will be combined into one intention. Uh, and, and so just be aware of that. Sick calls, uh, anointing of the sick. As for the bishop, we need to limit it only to those extreme cases. Now, but we are available. Considering that many of those who need anointing are the elderly or the very sick, um, and we need to protect them from this virus, <coughs> we need to 
limited on, and, and do it only for extreme situations. And as, you, as you know, I've had allergies for about a month or so already, and even though I, I don't have the flu or any of those viruses, um, I'm still coughing. You know, there are germs in every cough. My germs are okay with me, because they're mine. Uh, but I don't think you want them, because in you, they'll be foreign bodies. And so um, I am thankful to a prisoner who made some face, uh, face masks for me. And so for the anointing of the sick, if there's a need, call us at the office, inbox me on Facebook, and we will find a way. I can always pray with you uh, over the phone. Remember that the sacraments are God's normative channels of grace. However, they are not the exclusive channels of grace. What does that mean? The normative, that's the way that God has established for grace to flow. And that's the ordinary means, but that's not the only. He does not depend on them. He can work outside of them. Normally, normally he does, but in these cases, grace is there. And there's many ways that, that I can pray with you and FaceTime and uh, messenger, uh, messenger video. Uh, confessions. Confessions cannot be done over FaceTime. Uh, or over any other type of uh, video chat. And the reason for that is, uh, well, part of the sacramental grace is the presence, but also I cannot guarantee uh, confidentiality or privacy uh, from third parties that may be hacking into the system, I don't know. Um, it's, it's just not the means to do it. <clears throat> so for confessions, if you call the office or if you inbox me, I will see you um, uh, in the courtyard outside here at Queen. And uh, as long as it's an open space, and as long as there's not many people who want to come at a specific time. That's why I'm not going to schedule confessions uh, like we normally do or during the Lenten season, because I don't want to have a lot of people in the parking lot. Uh, but do call uh, or inbox me if you have need for confessions. In the meantime, appointments with me on uh, marriage preps, um, quinceanera preps, any of those questions. In the meantime, uh, send me an email, inbox me, but for the, in the time being, we are suspending all appointments with me. Um, again, if it's an emergency, we can talk over the phone or meet outside. Uh, again, provided you have not been sick, uh, provided that you also follow the guidelines of uh, sheltering in place. <coughs> now, there are some avenues that I think we should consider in growing spiritually. I, I am so excited. You know, when some of you send me your videos or your links uh, the, to the things that you, or the things that you are doing at home. Uh, I see your home altars. I see um, just the different ways you get ready for mass on Sundays. Uh, they're at home. And I'm just very touched by the way that you have responded to this. And, and thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, that information with me. <clears throat> there are so many ways that, uh, that you at home, you can continue your spiritual journey. Because remember what I said, I said, I think it was a while back, I, I said, you know, even, even if you get 100% of my homilies, even if you say, man, we, we learned so much today, and even if you take everything that, that I say, and you know, of course I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming here, uh, even if you were to take everything, that's only 1% of your growth. The rest is up to you. You have to have an itinerary for holiness, where you do your spiritual readings, where you do your devotions, where you seek God, where you're hungry and thirsty for God. It's not up to me. I will do everything I can as a shepherd. But it's really your journey with God. I'm here too. It's just the borras and strengthen you, uh, encourage you along. So one of the things you can do uh, is uh, at home. Create that sacred environment, that sacred space. Remember that, that you are the domestic church, the domus ecclesia. Remember that, that at home, that's where it starts, you need to create that environment. And, and if, if different families, cada familia, there's a cell, there's are the cells of the parish family, individual, individual families. If every family takes on their responsibility and identity as the domestic church, and because we are 
united in Christ because we are the body of Christ. Imagine, cada quien in their homes praying at the same time or the same devotions, the same readings, then we will come to an understanding, a deeper understanding of the mystery of the body of Christ because we are the body of Christ. We are one body. We are one body. Well, just came to remember that song from the I think it was the nineties. I think it was uh, Dana who sang when the Pope came or something like that. Was, we are one body. You know, man, you know, I, I, I bet Natalie could sing it really well, right? I, I wish Natalie was here uh, singing that song um, that we are one body. Uh, we are one body, one body in Christ, and we do not stand alone. Let's listen to Natalie. Go for it, girl. We are one body, one body in Christ. And he came that we might have life. Amen. For he tells us, I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the final sacrifice. I am the way, the truth, the life. He who believes in me will have eternal life. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the final sacrifice. I am the way, the truth, the life. He who believes in me will have eternal life. We are one body, one body in Christ. And we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ. And he came that we might have life. Amen. Thank you, Natalie. Now, of course, you know that that was all, that was staged. I asked Natalie, Natalie to please do this like five minutes before we began shooting the video. And she's helping me with the camera. Thank you, Natalie. We love you. <laughs> We're so blessed, aren't we? we? Indeed, we are that one body, one body in Christ. So create that space um, in your home. There you go. Uh, go ahead and, and, there you go, and create that space uh, in your home that plays an altar in front of the TV when watching Mass. Create sacred time when you and uh, your loved ones, um, a place where you and your loved ones can dedicate it to prayers such as the Rosary, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, um, you know, just the Angelus that I introduced at St. Joseph a, while, uh, a few months ago, or meditating on the Sunday readings or the daily readings as well. Um, Another thing you can do, make use of the many online resources that are out there uh, for faith formation. Uh, many of you are familiar with um, uh, formed.org. Uh, about 200 of you have already signed up. It's totally free. Uh, I can put the instructions again on Facebook on how to uh, create your own account. And right now, it, with this coronavirus uh, pandemic, they have uploaded a lot of good material that you can use for reflection uh, so that you, during this uh, pandemic. Uh, make sure to um, like our Facebook page <coughs> and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Of course, if you're watching this on either Facebook or on YouTube, you already have. So facebook.com forward slash Queen and Joseph all together. And it's A-N-D, not the and signal, but uh, so facebook.com forward slash Queen and Joseph. And then if you sign into your uh, Google account or, or YouTube account, uh, just look for us as just Our Lady Queen of the Universe, St. Joseph, comma, San Benito. And then if you subscribe, then you get a notification every time I upload uh, a video. Uh, so I will be updating you on these and any other activities or live streaming that we will do. Uh, just a note for right now, even though the Sunday Mass I've been recording it and then uh, uploading it. Daily Mass, I do the live stream. Uh, the bishop has asked of us or told us that we cannot pre-record the tritium. So that tritium beginning with next, well, the, the Holy Week services really, beginning with next week's uh, Palm Sunday and then the tritium Thursday, Friday and Saturday and Easter Sunday, those will be live streamed. And that will, later on in the week, I will let you know of the, the times when we'll be live streaming uh, those events. All right, let, let me talk about uh, some items that people have been asking me about and some concerns that I have and concerns that the bishop has as well. 
um, the impact of this pandemic on the economy globally, um, national economy, personal economy, and definitely on the parish uh, economy. Look, when this is all over, the truth is we would have entered into a whole new reality. We will see the world, hopefully each other, in a whole different way. Hopefully in a better way. But in the meantime, many are feeling and will continue to feel lost, scared, confused. confused. Many will undergo great financial hardships. And this is a reality. Many have already been laid off. And we as a church need to be aware that people are going to struggle if not already. And we need to be present. We need to be a church for them. This whole pandemic and the way that we've been dealing with it has really, um, it's been like a seismic uh, force that has shaken us to the core. On a global and national scale, and certainly on a personal and parish level, after this is over, it'll be a time to assess our priorities and to rebuild. Now, uh, we had a meeting with a, with a bishop through this platform called Zoom, which I had no idea that it existed. So all the presbyterate of the diocese, uh, we met with through the Zoom, and Bishop Aviles and Bishop Mario uh, were on the other side. And the bishop, Bishop uh, Flores, Bishop Flores and Bishop Aviles, uh, Bishop Flores said something that really struck me uh, when he said it. He said, when this is all over, we need to find ways of rebuilding the church and our parishes. And it really struck me, the phraseology. But then when I began to think about it, the image of a shockwave or, or an 18-wheeler just like running into us and you know it shakes you up, it breaks you, it, it, it shatters you, then rebuilding has to take place after that a rediscovering of our identity. We haven't had suspension of masses ever. It is not in recent memory, not in this country. That, that alone, the fact that you cannot come to mass on Sundays, that I cannot celebrate with my parishioners on Sundays, which is, for me, the goal is, yes, to see you, but I see you during the week, but to celebrate with you the resurrection of the Lord. I mean, that has, got to break us at the innermost of our identity. I mean, if nobody is touched by that, I, I don't know what, what else to do. And so because of that, our identity has not been destroyed, but it has been shaken. We need to rebuild. The rebuilding of our churches, not just financially, but from the deepest spiritual foundations will certainly be top priority. We need to be there for one another when we do this. We need to be aware of, uh, of what the other person is going through spiritually. And also we need to be aware of the financial burdens that people are going through. You know, so that, that's why I didn't even want to address this issue way at the beginning. Uh, I know people were saying, Father, well, that first weekend when we didn't have mass and before the shelter in place order, why, why can't you be out there with the, you know, pass out the bulletins and, and, and have a basket? That's not a priority. That's not something that was foremost on my mind. Even though the six or seven thousand dollars are coming every week, we do use them, we have a lot of expenses, uh, we have a lot of uh, bills today. But to me, that was not a priority at that time. It's still not the priority, uh, but we just have to find creative ways to deal with uh, this uh, financial devastation in our country. For me, the priority is your well-being, your spiritual well-being, your, your physical uh, well-being. <coughs> Some of you are already uh, struggling financially. Um, Some may have already been placed on leave, on unpaid leave. Uh, many are finding creative ways uh, to make it through. As a pastor, I am finding creative ways for our parish to stay financially healthy. Um, we're doing well, uh, thanks to you. We have a uh, cushion in the savings in the checking account, and we have some cushion in the savings account. 
though the checking account without any income coming in, it will eventually be depleted if this continues. Imagine six, seven thousand a week. And so um, just, I just need to be financially responsible, be a good steward, a good administrator about uh, with, the, with the parish finances. Uh, people have been asking me how they can continue to tithe. <coughs> and uh, let me tell you this, I, and it's been through Facebook or through text or people stopping me when they see me. Father, where can we bring in? And, and when it comes from you, like I said, I've been avoiding this in, in the earlier, earlier videos. Um, I have other priorities, which is your well-being. But I am so grateful. I'm so grateful that it was those people that have brought it up, you know, Father, how do we do this? Because it shows that in spite of a possible uh, personal financial hardships, you are still committed to the mission of the church. In spite of whatever you might be going through. Often we forget that the church is a nonprofit organization that relies entirely on you, the parishioners, to support us. You who are missionary disciples. Remember, one of the problems, uh, according to some studies of Catholics in the U.S., is that many Catholics see themselves not as disciples, but as consumers, consumers of a product. And if I'm not getting the product, therefore I'm not paying for it. But we are disciples, disciples in mission, antes de todo. And so, disciples that believe in the mission of the Lord, disciples that believe in the mission of the church. We are not consumers, we are not stockholders. I will shepherd you um, out through creative means and ways, even if money is not coming in. You are my sheep, and I will continue to be present to you. Because if we were stockholders or consumers, then I would say, well, you know, um, they're not paying, so I'm not giving. And that's not the gospel. That's not what we're about. I will continue to find creative ways to reach you, to feed you, to nourish you. And once you get back, then we will rebuild the church financially as well. So the gospel is free. The gospel is freely given. But we still have to finance the gospel. We still have to finance the mission. Our financing the gospel uh, includes everything from expenses related to liturgy, uh, from the decorations, uh, the, uh, the flowers, and as you know, with uh, Holy Week and Easter coming up, we were going to make those huge expenses. We're not now because we're not going to be celebrating those liturgies, and it's not for the public. Uh, choir, uh, music, things that I've been buying, the, the choirs, different uh, books and instruments, and uh, catechesis, faith formation, outreach, evangelization, uh, all, all of that, in addition to, of course, paying you know, monthly bills such as electricity, water, sewage. I am committed to being a good steward of God's temporal goods, of your contributions. And I have done, done that for the last three years. I, also, I'm committed to helping our parish staff, because they're there for you to navigate these difficult times as well. Uh, many parishes, or parishes rather, have been given the option <coughs> in case of extreme necessity to place, uh, in case of extreme financial necessity uh, and hardship, uh, to place their staff on an unpaid leave. We're not gonna do that. I have made a commitment and a promise to the staff that this will not happen because I am trusting in you. They will remain full-time. I did reduce the number of hours on the office, uh, but they are still full-time, receiving the, the full benefits, especially the insurance that we provide. So I need you to help me maintain that. Um, it's, it, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And right now, like I said, there's a cushion in the checking and savings, so we're able to do it. But eventually, we are going to be needing for you to forward us your offerings and your tidings. Um, we do not receive um, any funds from the, from the federal government. Uh, we're not going to get our check. The, like many will in the stimulus package. So we rely on you, our parishioners. I'm grateful, therefore, to all of you who have approached me and people are saying, Father, how come you haven't said anything? You know, Father so and so, estaba con la canasta ahí afuera, and you know, cada, cada cura con su locura, right? 
But I'm thankful to all of you who have been asking me, so I think now it's time to address this issue. Also, here are some ways that you can bring or forward us your offering. The most uh, common way right now, mail it to us. Like I said, the staff is still working at the office. <coughs> um, I'm out there, uh, there's somebody there, and uh, we'll be checking the mail. So that's the best way. You could bring it over to the office. In fact, that was gonna be, had I done this video before the shelter in place, that was my recommendation. But right now, I am not going to encourage that. I'm not. If you are in the area, call Yvette, call Mary, you know, swing by, we'll open the door, and you know, you just leave it there. We'll find creative ways, right? Uh, but I'm not gonna sit here and say, bring it to the office, because I don't want you to be out and about. Please, only go out there if it's extremely necessary, right? So, uh, while well, the shelter in place is in order, let's try to avoid coming to the office. The best way, the most effective way right now is through online giving. And people have been asking me about this for a long time. Father, you need to create a way, you know, all these parishes are really up to date. Well, thank God the Diocese uh, of Brownsville, the bishop has given us guidelines. And it is very easy to do it through the diocese and website. And I'm going to do another instructional video or later on. Uh, in tomorrow or soon after I upload this one and I'm going to guide you through the process and the good news about this uh, online giving to the Office of Stewardship in the Diocese is that 100% of it uh, will come to the parish. Uh, there's even a space where you can put your envelope number uh, and um, so 100% comes to the parish. All the administrative fees that this company charges will be paid for by the Diocese and another good thing Bishop told us uh, during this time of crisis, he will not charge, or the diocese will not uh, charge us the 11.5% assessment. As you know, 11.5% of everything that comes in, we have to forward to the diocese for their administration, which is the right thing to do. But for the, in the meantime, our bishop has decided uh, not to charge the parishes the 11.5% uh, diocesan assessment. So 100% of everything that you give us give your parish will be for us, for the parish. Um, we priests, um, let me let me look at my notes. I just don't want to make sure, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. The dice is set up on a given system. Okay, yeah, I, I think I said everything. Um, and like I said, I, I will create an instruction video later on on how to do online giving. It is very, very, very easy. Um, all right, uh, let's just uh, conclude and do a few more remarks. Let's go to the Word of God. That's always a good thing, isn't it? Let's see. Can you give me a second to, let's see, let me find my notes, my other notes. All right, we're gonna go to Romans 8. 28? No, 837. Because you know that Romans 828, that's my favorite. But I already uh, preached on this the other day. Romans 837. So, in your Bibles. Romans 837. Okay, 37? Yes. Okay. Romans 8, 37 and 38. It says, Now, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. Again. Now, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly. Not just conquer the poquito. We conquer overwhelmingly. Through him who loved us. For, verse uh, 38 now, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor coronavirus or pandemic or shelter in place nor any other creature 
will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours in Christ Jesus. Amen. We just love that. So I want you to open your Bibles and, uh, and let's, do, let's repeat it together. 37. Now in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities <coughs> nor present things nor future things nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other creature. And here you can insert any concern you have. You can insert any problem you have. You can insert, you can insert any fear you have, any worry, anything that you are going through right now. It is nothing compared to the love that God has poured out in your heart in Jesus Christ. You put whatever it is that you're going through right now, my brothers and sisters, whatever it is that you're struggling with, because when the Lord decided to send his only son for us and to pay the debt of our sins, our sins have been paid. We have been ransomed. We have been bought at a great price. And the only thing that we need to do, the only thing that God is asking us to do is to accept the salvation, the forgiveness he is offering us through his son on the cross, to come to him to repent of our sins, to accept his plan of salvation, to invite Jesus into our hearts, to surrender our lives, surrender him, your problems, your worries, your husband, your wife, your kids, your situation, your work, your finances, surrender, say, Lord, be Lord of my life. To be Lord means that, that he, he, he's in charge of everything, has full authority in you. Invite him into your heart. You are a conqueror. Nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And because I love you with the heart of a shepherd, the love I have for you is through God. I cannot love you any way else. Remember what I said before, unmediated love can easily be corrupted into envy, jealousy, lust, betrayal. Unmediated love, that's when we love each other directly. So to love you perfectly, I need to love you the way God loves you, to see you the way he sees you. And you know how he sees you? With love, with compassion, with mercy, with tenderness, with kindness. And as I contemplate God through him, I contemplate you the way he does. That's why I can say that I love you. And if I love you with the love of God, then his word says that nothing can separate us from that love. Nothing. Stand firm on God's word. Stand firm on that, those bonds of our Christian uh, fraternity. Stay strong with one another. Pray with each other. Take care of each other, please. We didn't say, por favor. This will pass. We may not return to the way things were, but it'll be a new normal. And I feel a better, a better world is coming where we are more aware of each other. You are in my heart and in my prayers. So would you please join me right now as we conclude and pray right now to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you. Father, we rejoice in your gift of victory, the gift of your son, the gift of our salvation. We thank you. Because your word tells us that you make all things work for good for those who love you, for those you have, whom you have called according to your purpose. So right now, Father, we stand on your promises. We stand on your word. And we take you at your word, for you have promised that you will bring about healing and restoration. You have promised victory to those who believe in you. Father, we read today in scripture, in the first reading, when you said, I have said it, I have promised it, and I will do it. So your words, Lord. So we're here to stand on those words, to be reminded of your words, that you promised and you will do it. We believe, Lord. We believe that you will do it, Lord. We believe we don't doubt. We will not 
be anxious and go about worrying about things that we have no control over. We choose to believe, Lord. We choose to honor you. Do whatever in your wisdom you feel needs to be done, but that we may come back to you, Lord. That we may choose you. Whatever needs to happen in our lives, Lord, like with Job, that you allowed the, the, the loosing of so many things in his life, but he remained faithful to you, Lord. Do whatever you, we give you permission, Lord, to take away all that is not of you, our comforts, uh, the things that we're so used to, Lord, uh, the, 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 the things that bind us, like, like with Lazarus, uh, the bandages that keep us uh, bound and, and tight and paralyzed. Lord, remove those bandages. Remove those bonds that, 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 that keep us tied up. That do not allow us to become the men and women that you have called us to be. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, release the power of your healing in our midst, Lord. We pray right now for those who are sick at home. We pray right now for those who are struggling in their infirmities. We pray that the touch, the healing touch of our God be upon them. We pray for all those who are affected right now, Father God, with this pandemic. Especially those who are, who are unemployed, those who will lose their jobs. Lord, we pray that, that you may bless them, that we, the church, may be there for them. We pray for, for our, our healthcare workers, our first responders. We pray for our truck drivers who bring us food. We pray for our civic leaders. We pray for the bishops and the pope and for your people, Lord. Bless us and bring us back to you. We believe in you, Lord. We believe in your promise. And we make this prayer through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit fall upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. I love you very much. And I miss you. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.